want to thank you for coming. Uh, we know that there's a lot of good talks out there, so we'll try and rip through this as fast as we can. We have 20 minutes and a um, significant amount of material to get through and a quick demo to show you kind of what we've been up to. So, so um, quick rundown. We'll do a brief introduction so you get to know who we are, talk a little bit about our uh, PCAP attack library, the, the PAL, which is the focus of our research here. Uh, give you a brief overview of, of how we built um, the PAL out, right? How we, how we built our PCAP attack library out, what that means to you. Uh, talk about a, a tool that you can use. Uh, we know there's a lot of replay tools out there, but we'll talk about the tool that we use, kind of why, why it's a little bit different. Um, that Kyle actually is the one that wrote that. And then we'll talk about if you're interested in getting involved, what you can do, right? How we built it, uh, lessons we've learned, and then kind of where we're going in the future if you're interested in, in helping that out. And then lastly, we'll do, do our demo. So um, just to kind of get it started here, my name is Pat Ingebretson. Uh, I teach at Dakota State University um, in the undergrad and graduate computer network security degrees. Uh, I focus mainly on the network side of things, so offensive uh, networking, penetration testing uh, side of things. I'm Kyle Cronin. I'm a doctorate student at DSU. I do a little bit of teaching instructor and sysadmin in our virtualized hacker lab, so to speak. So something of a jack of all trades at DSU. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Paul. I, I also teach at Dakota State. So uh, everybody from South Dakota, I know there's a couple of you. So uh, thanks for coming and we'll get started uh, with Pat. Okay, so ultimately this tool started out um, as a response to a need we had in, at the educational level, uh, this project. And so a couple years back we were at a, a workshop and we were trying to come up with a better way to teach our students um, how to write ACLs, right? In particular, we were talking about SNORT. Um, at our, in our degree, we're very hands-on, so we do about 50% lecture, 50% lab. Um, so we needed a way to talk about and demo IDS um, technologies. Uh, snort and then let our kids kind of get get used to uh, writing those snort rules and somebody at the workshop had actually created a, a fairly useful program it was a C program and a, they went out and and captured a you know significantly large PCAP file uh, and that particular PCAP file had a lot of malicious packets in it right and so there was maybe four or five different rules you could you could write based off of this um, kind of one tool that just replayed this um, continuous continuous loop of this traffic. So a uh, great way for us to start out, but uh, in the end didn't work very well for us because obviously not very flexible. We couldn't add additional attacks to it. Uh, wasn't very portable. Uh, didn't have a lot of additional functionality. Had no additional functionality. So uh, it was kind of the first first wave of we got the idea, the great idea. We just wanted to add, you know, add to that um, for us. And we have a class at, at Dakota State. We actually have a one full class that's all IDS. So um, becomes a big deal for us. And the other, the other issue with the, the CAN traffic that we had is it had a lot of non-attack traffic. Um, so it had a lot of, in this case, a lot of junk in it. So uh, we couldn't parse that out really. And then it had a lot of, a lot of packets that were of no value when, you, when we were learning on attack. So if a student missed a rule or mistyped a rule, they might alert on a normal, tra on normal traffic and they think they actually caught an attack. So we had to clean it up. Yeah, so the other thing that we do, uh, Dr. Paula and myself, we also serve as consultants or we, we do uh, penetration testing for a, for a small um, company in the Midwest. And uh, it's not uncommon for us to get a call from a financial institution that we do pen tests for and they'll say, you know, the wire is real quiet today. I'm just interested in, you know, if you can, uh, can you set my, set my alarms off to, you know, we're good at breaking stuff, so. Make sure they're actually ready. Yeah, so, you know, my response is always no problem let me fire up metasploit and then they get freaked out you know don't run hacker tools on my network so what we decided to do was kind of tackle this from two ways then right so uh, the pcap attack library from an educational standpoint very important but then um, you know from a client side um, as well so you don't really have to the goal here is you don't have to know how to perform a particular attack just say you know i'm looking for a pcap attack uh, file for a port scan or for sql injection or whatever the case may be that you're that you're um, looking at okay so if you're interested um, in security at all I think you should probably and you're not familiar with uh, CAPIC I think you should go out and take a look at it uh, it's DHS sponsored um, dictionary classification of attacks 
Um, very well kept up to date, provides a lot of information uh, about attacks, right? The goal is to classify uh, attacks. You can go out and find that at mitre.kpic.org, I think is the, the website. Yep. So uh, what we decided to do, I've, had a, I've done a significant amount of research with KPIC over the past probably three or four years. And so what we wanted to do was add to the common body of knowledge, right? And so what we thought would be cool is if we took these, the standard, this KPIC standard, and we started attaching actual PCAP uh, files to the standard, right? So instead of just going and reading about a particular description uh, of a particular attack, you could actually also go grab the PCAP file, um, you know, and, and replay it for your for yourself, right? So um, that was kind of the the direction that we took. So when we build these the, the the PCAP attack library, there's a number of different ways you can you can go about doing this. We found probably the easiest way to do this. Um, very simple network, right? One of the issues that we ran into with that first uh, PCAP file or the, the replay, the traffic replay tool that we, we looked at was there's so much extra junk in there. So we tried to streamline the, the attack to make it as small and as clean as possible, right? So in this particular example you see here, very simple. Uh, we take an attacker box, you know, 99% of the time that's just going to be, you know, backtrack uh, with whatever tool you need um, to run the attack. Then the hard part, obviously, you have to set up your victim uh, in the appropriate way. So, you know, you need software packages or whatever you need to get installed to make your victim vulnerable. Uh, and then we dropped a, a snort box so we could test our rules, right? So um, just a number of different pieces there. It also works well if you, uh, in many cases, if you just run one, one machine and have multiple VMs on it, obviously very quiet. As you'll see in the demo, that's kind of how I do it. So that, that works as well. You don't get a lot of... Uh, extra traffic right out of here. So in our particular case, you know, how do we build out the PCAP attack library? Uh, simple enough, you know, go out to the dictionary, the KPIC dictionary, identify an attack that you want to catalog, uh, set up your machines. That's two and three are probably your most labor intensive pieces. Uh, then you have to test that. So there's a significant amount of testing. We try to reuse and give credit uh, to the snort rules that are already out there. Obviously very uh, very supportive community and, and a lot of good rules out there. So we try and reuse those rules when possible. If not, we'll we'll write a, a rule for it. Um, ch check and make sure that everything's running. Um, once your rule gets fired, it's just a matter of starting Wireshark, running the attack, stopping Wireshark. Right? Then you have a nice PCAP uh, attack file. So um, when we started doing this, when we started uh, kind of running running these exercises, uh, we were talking to Kyle, uh, sysadmin extraordinaire, and uh, said, you know, there's there's a, a need out there for this ability to replay the traffic. And again, the focus of the, I, I want to really emphasize this, right, the focus of the research is not the, the tool here that we're going to, that we're giving away, but um, it's really more on the, the PCAP attack library. Because you can take our PCAP files uh, and run them through your favorite you know, whatever your favorite uh, tool is. But what we wanted to do, since it started as an educational piece, it was important to us to provide a very easy, GUI-driven interface for replaying this particular traffic, right? So if you have a, if you're an educator and you have a, uh, you're teaching an IDS class or maybe just an IDS lecture or something and you want your students to be able to uh, write particular snort rules, it's labor intensive for the educator, for the, for the instructor to, you know, have to play traffic or, or play malicious traffic on the network for the students to pick up, right? So when we went to Kyle and Kyle said, yeah, I can, I can write something, you know, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And uh, so SprayPal is the, the tool that we use to play it. But again, it, it plays on, on many different levels there, right? You can use any, any tool you want. So he's added a lot of different uh, features to, to the tool. Right, you can you can use one victim. You can you, when you're spraying the traffic, right? You use one victim. You can spray it. You can broadcast it out. Uh, you can use one attack, multiple attacks. Right, take all the PCAP library attacks that you want and just continuously loop them and replay them. And I think I don't know. Did you get the? Have we dropped the return traffic? Yeah, it, we're just ignoring any return traffic. So it doesn't really have any value to us. So. Yeah, because we don't, I mean, we don't want shells back, right? We don't want to replay or we don't want to, we just want to, uh, you know, nail it. So when we talk about 
uh, getting involved, right? Step, steps are very similar to uh, the way that we've done our stuff. Uh, take a look at, at CAPIC. Uh, we've worked with uh, DHS or CAPIC in the past uh, based off of some of our research. So um, maybe maybe we can get the research we've done folded in there. Otherwise, you know, just contact us if you're interested in, in cataloging or if you have an example of an attack PCAP file. Um, you know, find the ID, the, the appropriate ID. All the CAPIC attacks are ID'd by number. Uh, and then we try to keep that again as clean as small as possible uh, when we get that. For our particular tool, we have to save it with a PCAP extension. Um, so that's just a matter of adding on the PCAP extension. Uh, and then obviously, you know, send it off to me and we'll get it folded into our work and then we'll, we'll re republish it out there uh, for you to get it. So uh, at this point, I think we have about, well, probably 15 PCAP uh, attack files uh, out there ready to be grabbed with uh, corresponding snort rules. So what we try and do when we, when we uh, catalog an attack is we actually get the PCAP, write the snort rule, test it, put all those into one folder uh, with the corresponding CAPIC ID, and then uh, make that folder uh, available as part of the library, right? So you can, you can use the link here uh, to go out and grab both the tool that, that we'll show you here in a minute as well as, the, uh, as, well as the, the library itself of the attacks. And we're adding to those um, on, a, on an almost daily basis. We have a, a grad student who's kind of taken an interest in this as well. So um, these, get, these get updated. So what we're going to do is... Uh, show you just a quick demo, right? So this is uh, SprayPal. This is the tool that Kyle wrote, and there's a lot of functionality. I know we don't In have C sharp because he's a sysadmin. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hardcore developer by any means. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. Uh, we actually have a, a Linux version coming, or 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 already there. So if you're interested, you want to run it in Linux, you can do that as well. And not only am I a bad developer, I'm a lazy one, so we're just using a WinPCAP wrapper. <laughs> So uh, there's a, and there, again, there's a lot of functionality in here. You can go and manipulate MAC addresses, IP addresses, source and destination, um, and you can replay your traffic in loops. So if you just want to, you know, continuously run one port scan or uh, one brute force attempt or one footprinting attempt or whatever the CAPIC attack, the, the PCAP file is, you can replay that over and over and over again. Um, so in this case, uh, what I'm going to do. I just have snort running down here, and I'm, I apologize, this is a horrible uh, view. I realize it's probably going to be near impossible for you to see, so you're just going to have to take my word on it as an, as an honest guy from South Dakota. Um, okay, so down here I have uh, just have snort running in the background. Again, two VMs uh, set up here. Up top is the local rules file. So in this case, uh, I'll just take the, the first example there, CAPIC attack pattern 49, which is brute force. It's a brute force attack, and in this this particular rule fires on a on a snort or on a SSH brute force attempt. Um, so you know standard standard rule. So down here in this window, I have uh, snort running with the local rule set. Um, we just go out, find the appropriate library, uh, and I'll just grab 49. That was the one that I have uncommented there. Say okay. Uh, just tells us, you know, name of the name of the uh, CAPIC attack, and then we should be able to uh, send the packets. And then here we have our rule fired. I'll try and zoom this in a little bit. I'm sure it's going to blow up, but yeah, that's horrible. But you can see you can see a little bit, right? CAPIC attack pattern 49, uh, brute force password attempted. So uh, it's really. The, the purpose and the point, you know, for us is, as educators is to help our students learn uh, how to write rules and, and how to kind of think for themselves and fend for themselves and inside, of, uh, inside of Snort. But this can also be extended. Uh, I know Dr. Paul, I teaches a web app class as well, right? And so anything with an ACL really could be, could be useful for web application firewalls or whatever your particular flavor is. We're just attaching onto Snort. So... So uh, with that, we're actually uh, just want to say a quick thanks to a couple people, uh, our families, for letting us come to Vegas, surrendering us for a week to, to <laughs> Vegas. Uh, and then also to the university, the, the dean, uh, Dean Halverson, is uh, very supportive, and as well as the university, right, for, for our time uh, to work on this. So uh, that's all we have. If you have questions, we'll be happy to answer, and Kyle can talk.